Hey everyone, welcome back to the shop. Today, let's get done painting the stomp. All right, before I take you back over to the other side where I draw my spraying, um, I got down here early, probably about three hours ago. I've got the wing all taped up and ready for the bursts. Uh, what I want to do is I'm going to grab the other camera. We'll walk out there and I want to show you uh, exactly how I took care of everything getting up to that point. And the reason why I didn't have you guys included in me taping the whole thing up because it just takes a lot of time. So I'll just go ahead and give you a quick little walk around and show you exactly how it was done and what I have to do just before I push the button on this break in. All right, as you can see, you can see where the bursts are gonna head out. So this is gonna be, we're calling it the sun, the orb around here, and then the bursts are gonna shoot out that way. So I decided instead of going with, with more than two, um, I just kind of came in this one, uh, looked like it was pretty good um, just by taking some tape and putting it down uh, and building off that one. So that one looked pretty good and then I just made this one in accordance to it and because this one's shorter I should have stopped it should have been about this wide right here and I went up about another 30 percent just so that it looks it's going to look a little bit better on the wing than if I had a narrow one down here and then everything else wasn't taken care of. Originally, I was thinking of going a little bit thicker on this one at the end, um, but what I didn't want to do, because I'm already jumping right at the corner here, and you can't see it, but there's yellow masking tape. Yes, it's yellow masking tape, and then it's blue on top of it with paper underneath. Um, so they're going to be narrower than this. You just can't tell. You might be able to see it right here. Here's the blue. Here's the edge of the yellow, and it works the same way over here too. So we got the yellow edge here and the blue edge there. So, so it will be a little bit narrower than it was. But I was thinking about going wider down here, going from here and then cutting it down to about here. But then I was gonna be coming across uh, the other part of the aileron and I just decided to have this and just just forward of the aileron. So it's got maybe, maybe a quarter inch gap before it gets to the aileron. Um, less taping to do because this one was fun enough to do I, I didn't want to have to do it out here too all right typical tape um i like the frog tape because it doesn't stick as much to the paint down there that's why i come on top of it with uh a, another type of tape that is even though this will stop bleed under this it, you're not going to have a, a issue with trying to pop tape or pop the paint up off when you're lifting it uh, and it does stick very nicely all right, now making the sun part, the orb. Um, what I did was, and this is a tape I've got years ago. This was back when I did the, the big biplane. Uh, it's fine line tape. I know that they've changed this. Uh, 3M has changed it now. Uh, I don't know if you can get it exactly like this anymore, but it still works nicely. This stuff, even though I've had it, I got it in 2007. Uh, this was a sealed, sealed package until I just started using this one. So it's still good. So what I did uh, just to make the radius was, yes, I made a template. And how I made that template was I had a bowl upstairs that I came down and I took my little compass with the pencil on it, brought it out to about a quarter inch, traced around the outside of this one, cut it out, and then this was put down here, traced around it with a pencil, and then I put the fine line tape all the way around the outside of it uh right on that line and then so this part that's how i got the circular part of the orb the interesting part i'm gonna have to go through before i push down on that button the first time every little seam right here let me switch hands where i'm going from the fine line just to my regular frog masking tape um i'm gonna come on in and with a fingernail just kind of burnish that in so that way there's less chance of a bleed under at that point. So that's why I don't have any tape going right up to the edge of this because I need to be able to get my fingernail down in there and go ahead and burnish each one of them. So, uh, so those will be good. The other little issues I was having was right here where this line's gonna be, I came in and made a small slit right here. 
um, just because it, as this thing moves around, it kept popping this off. So, and I'm not too concerned about that when I spray the black paint. It's just one quick little coat and it's done. And what I did on the trailing edge, unlike what I did on the sides where I've got the masking tape halfway down the edge, here it's just, it's almost right at the very top. There's almost nothing poking over. And I was trying to not do it on the edge because this was gonna be a real pain in the butt right down here. So I figured, let's see if I can get rid of the problem that I know is gonna happen there. Um, and it, it doesn't it doesn't need to come halfway down and that's going to be a tough little thing to make sure that it doesn't want to pop off uh, because you've got something that's probably i don't know i'm going to throw down probably somewhere around fifty thousandths of an inch because this is not very thick here at the trailing edge and uh, i don't want that to pop off so what i will do is um and this won't be filmed because i'm going to be moving very quickly this is about three hours worth of work. So it's just going to be one quick coat and then uh, then done. Then it's just going to be me spending probably about 15 minutes trying to get all of this off um, before it dries and wants to pop. So if that sounds like fun, you're wrong. It's, uh, it's going to be very expedient. And uh, that's it, time, time is of the essence when you're trying to get that tape off. So as soon as... As soon as I am done with the spray paint and everything and I get everything off, I'll bring y'all back just to show you what it looks like. All right, the black is sprayed. And it's doing some weird little haze thing. I wanna see what that looks like when it fully dries. And it could be just because of the uh, humidity. So hopefully that does not stay because that's uh, kind, of, kind of discerning. You can see when I blow on it. It's kind of dulling out, so hopefully hopefully that's just humidity on the top of the paint. So this is all done, all sprayed. And as soon as I can start pulling this covering off uh, and it's done, I'll bring it back. All right, it's not there anymore. Here's where it's at. Let's see if you can get a halfway decent view of what we're looking at. It came out, it came out okay still think it's missing something and I don't know what it's missing so I'm not probably not gonna find out until I put that wing on the plane now as you can see we still have that hazing it's something funky happened with this one um, I, I can make that work um, I'm just gonna wait and see what happens when it becomes fully cured because um, if that's gone because it's kind of strange it's it's only it's really spotty on where it popped up uh, I've got other little sections like this right here. You can see we've got some little haze sections, but the rest is, is black gloss. Um, I want to see what I can do with this. Um, but we got to wait until it cures all the way just to see what happens with it. Because I may be able to come on in. Because I have not decided yet on whether I want all that gloss. But I may just come inside and grab one of these, the little Nortons. It's a triple lot uh, steel wool. I may just go ahead and crack the glaze off that black because I think it might look better uh, on the fuselage as well. So, but we're gonna see what happens after I get done painting the fuselage because I'm not gonna retape that wing back up and try to shoot another coat on it. I just, I just don't understand why I did it, but, but we do have the burst. The burst is done. So, and that's, uh, I think that's, that's the way it's gonna stay with the exception of maybe just taking the gloss off of it. We'll see. All right, everyone, by the clock on the wall. It's been a long day. All right, as you can see, oh, we've got the bursts on the wing, which you saw earlier. And I've also got the fuselage done. And the nose and the fuselage, everything came out. Uh, it 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 could have. I would like to have had it come out better than it did. I always try to improve uh, every time I do a build. Um, in this one, because of why I built it the way that it it is, um, going from a tiger moth to a stomp, uh, for two reasons: because they're more aerobatic. Um, and there was nothing wrong with the, uh, 
Tiger Moth, with the exception that the manufacturer who built the almost ready to cover kit put ailerons on the top and the bottom uh, wing, which they didn't have those on the uh, Tiger Moth. So the stomp did. So I figure let's just go ahead and we'll turn it into a stomp. So let me go ahead, get the other camera fired up, and I'll get you a little bit closer uh, view of, of what it looks like now. And I did put up some, uh, some new lighting, put up four more lights in the shop um, last night, as soon as I got home from work, um, just to see how much better the light would be. The light's better uh, on me, less glare off the top of my bald head. Um, I still have a light above me, but I've got uh, another two LEDs on this side and then two more on the, on the, the regular, what I call my back wall. Uh, to you guys, the front wall would be the back wall because that's pretty much how I do the videos here. It's a tiny little shop. It's better to work in just this direction. All right, anyway, let me get back to the plane. All right, hopefully with the extra lighting in here, this will look a little bit better because I was having issues with light uh, in the Canon. So uh, I'm hoping it's going to look a little bit better, less work for me editing. All right, starting back here, I was going to originally have this come underneath and then come down and loop up around it. And I decided that, heck, you know what? Let's just round it up. So curve it over. And it was just a decision I made on the fly today. Uh, because for me to come in and have it terminate under here, that was just going to take me a lot longer to get everything taped up. Because even the fuselage itself, uh, and especially up front, that's where it took so much time. Um, because that was about three hours prep time getting everything taped up. This overall was probably about an hour and a half. Because those little curves, and I'll show you what I use to make those curves. Um... It was, uh, it just, it took longer than expected, but I had a good idea that it might run a little bit long on time. So anyway, all right, getting back to the plane. So this little thing right here, that was where it, the, it went from the tape, the masking tape up to the fine line. And there's a little bump on this side and a little bit smaller bump on the other side. I'm just going to leave it. It's, it's not going to make the plane fly any different. And from about, you know, four feet away, you don't notice it. But anyway, as you can see, as we run down the fuselage, everything is just nice and straight, crisp all the way down, even as we go up and go around. And then here's, this is that compounding curve I talked about. It came in and then it swept out and then it wraps underneath the bottom. So that's the way my DH-71 Tiger Moth is. Uh, and I figured, you know what? It was originally a Tiger Moth. We're going to do the same thing with this one. So, uh, so as you can see, this is all done. I've got the cockpit in. I had to do a little bit of sanding on the top of this to get it to slide in. You can't see it because it's, it's all covered where I had to sand it. So um, I do have my electronics going to go in here. I'm possibly, possibly going to put another switch panel back here and have my LED light uh, because I got, and I think it's upstairs, I got another uh, ignition cutoff switch um, because normally I use uh, relays to cut off the power to it. Uh, for $16, I was putting an order into Amazon for some more fuel line for this thing. I just ordered one up, so it's all here. So the switch for the ignition will go back here. The switch for the radio will go up there. So now I'll have two uh, switches for the radio um, and then possibly, possibly, I'm still kicking on this idea, whether to go, because it's a smaller plane, whether to go one battery for servos and then one battery for ignition, um, still not 100%. I, I lost the plane once because I had two batteries, but I wired them in improperly. Um, I kind of like to have a, a backup, but uh, that I'll make the decision with when I'm putting this together. But uh, regardless, uh, what it'll normally be is the switches will be up here. And then if I put an ignition switch back here, I've got the switch already. I just got to drill it out and then put the LED light right next to it. That way the ignition's here, the radio's up there. So that way when you go to start it, you get it all choked out. And then you come over here, you turn the power on, and then all of a sudden now you've got spark. Less chance of getting your hand hit by a prop. As you can see by that metal finger, 50 cc's right through. Keep your fingers out of the way of the prop. 
All right, so anyway, on the, uh, on the wing, uh, we're all good. Everything is rock solid. I came in and painted this just with a brush, uh, taped the bottom of it because I wasn't happy with the way that the paint, uh, when I had it taped up, some of it flashed, it didn't flash up. Some of it, uh, the, the tape ended up covering my spray pattern. And so there was yellow down in here. So I just came in and just hit it with a brush and it, it's fine. But anyway, so that's done. I got the, uh, pretty much the end struts, the interplane struts, they're all painted up, ready to go. And many, many moons ago, when I first took this thing out of the box, this was broken. So I just came in and brazed it, cleaned it up a little bit, and I just went ahead and just painted it today. So that's good to go too. So I've got a whole box full of items. Here's the front landing gear and I've got some other stuff. It's all down there in that blue tote. Um, so I just have to come in and start assembling the plane. So as of right now, it's now considered an ARF. I just have to put the radio system in, uh, the fuel tank, put the engine on it, and uh, I've got to make my uh, flying wires for the tail. So, and those, I've got the wire, it's either on that wall or it's down below, but I've got the wire already. Uh, and I've got the connectors to go ahead, put it all together. So then at that point, it's just a matter of uh, just cutting up some thin aluminum tubing, putting the wire through, crimping the aluminum tubing on it to bind around it, and then just go ahead and put them on there and it's done, ready to go. And uh, Brad, I know, buddy mine Brad, I know you can cut the stuff because you got the stuff. Don't worry, I'll probably be talking to you in the very near future. So what do you say we just go ahead and call this a video and then I'll see you guys next time. I'm back down in the shop.